Hello, wonderful people. Welcome to Law Made Simple and Comprehensive. I am so happy to be back and I would like to welcome the 2022 group. Welcome, buddies. I hope that we're going to have a great journey together. Um, you guys, I am so excited to be back. I always get so excited when I get the chance to record these videos. All right, today uh, I want us to focus on ENG 1503, first assignment. Mm, this assignment is quite complicated and hectic, if I may say. Let's get on with it, guys. For this assignment, you need to create a cover page and um, write your student number. That's the most important thing that you need to do. You might even forget to write your name, but do not forget to write your student number um, followed by your name. And um, the unique number is also crucial. So you need to write the unique number for this assignment. The unique number reads as 170958. And the due date is the 14th of March, which is um, on Monday from now. For this assignment, for you to answer this assignment the way that you expected to answer it and get the correct marks for this, you need to have the prescribed book for this module. The name of the book is Academic English Reading and Writing Across the Disciplines. You are going to find everything that you need on how to write, how to structure a paragraph, how to write essays, and all the necessary information that you need from this book. You do not have to buy the hard copy of this book. You can simply get um, PDF version of it you can find it on telegram or any other place where you can be able to download pdfs okay let's start by reading the instructions and the paragraph we're just going to read everything function the purpose of this assignment is to teach you how to critically read an article and to engage with and reflect on it in an academic manner by answering the assigned questions in short paragraphs. When marking the assignment, we will penalize poor language expression. Examples of poor language expression include serious errors in sentence structure, incomprehensible and barely literate vocabulary, spelling, punctuation, and so on. Answer the following questions in short paragraphs of not more than 100 to 150 words each. Do not code directly from the text unless you are instructed to do so. The perpetrators of workplace building in schools, a South African study. A general concern in the workplace is not only how management manages, but also what goes on when colleagues choose to tend their heads. Previous research has looked at such undisclosed behavior as sexual harassment, emotional and physical abuse, and workplace aggression. The, the psychological impact of these behaviors on the individual as well as the organizational cost implications. Forgive me, you guys. I am not going to try and read these um, in-text referencing here, the citations. I'm not going to try and read them because I'm just so bad in pronunciations, <laughs> in, uh, I mean, name pronunciations. So please spare me that one. Okay, let's continue. Workplace bullying is a particular form of aggression where direct or indirectly acts lead an employee to being systematically subjected to acts involving degrading and disrespectful treatment due to serious personal differences between employees. There are many possible factors that could lead an individual to experience bullying within their work environment. These pertain to organizational factors that foster bowling, perpetrators' personality characteristics and individual personality characteristics of the victim. Much of the recent research has focused on the distinguishing features that define a bowling, as well as trying to determine the characteristic traits of the victim. 
This has led to unnecessary stereotypes. That's not every individual might perceive their negative experiences as bullying, but rather prefer to label the actions differently in order to cope. Certain aspects of a person has been considered in order to assist researchers in determining the characteristics that define the bully, such as an individual's age, gender, and his or her mental status. Research indicates that a child belonging to an aggressive family is a central in indicator that the child is likely to exhibit aggressive behavior. As will be discussed, aggression is a fundamental trait in a bully. Thus, two aggressive children are likely to be a bully in the schoolyard playing field as well as to carry this behavior with them through life to become the workplace bully themselves. Bullying at work is claimed to be an extreme form of social stress. Bullying in the workplace is referred to as a more crippling and devastating problem for employees than all other work-related stresses put together. Coping may be seen as a moderator of the impact of the negative behavior. Thus, it is necessary to consider the coping strategies victims are likely to employ when faced with a bullying situation. However, coping styles are person-specific according to their social norms and may vary the impact on the individual during the bullying process. All right, um, for 10 marks, in your own words, summarize the purpose of the text. That is supposed to be our first question. Um, for this question, I think that you need to reread this uh, passage maybe numerous times so that you can be able to get what is really going on here and what they're talking about. And maybe try to give yourself some time and read up about bullying or workplace bullying somewhere else, maybe on the internet, do some little research. So before answering, like before going like wherever that you want to go with this assignment, you first need to go to your prescript book, the academic English, whatever. Yes, you need to come to this book. Um, you can start reading from the first page, but um, for this, um, you, start, uh, you need to start from page, you can start from page 11, but the basic information that I need you to get is on page 13, writing a thesis statement, because that's where you get to um, know um, how to, to structure a very well-constructed sentence where you get the topic, the controlling idea, and you're also going to go further with uh, reading the book. You're going to know how to write topic sentences, everything that you need to know when writing a paragraph, a correct, well-structured paragraph. You need to get to this book before attempting the assignment. You further go down with the book, you get how to develop the supporting ideas because you need to support your statement. There are just too many things that you're going to get from that book. So um, here the question is asking us to summarize the purpose of the text. Oh, I nearly forgot about this um, transcript here. Um, okay. Forgive me, you guys. I don't have the PDF version of this. I only got screenshots. So just bear with me. You can use your own screenshots. Oh, sorry. You can use your own, um, the transcript of the podcast. Okay. The first question of the assignment reads, in your own words, summarize the purpose of the text. An author's purpose is his reason or intent for writing. Ask yourself, what message are the authors trying to convey? What are they trying to tell us? Are they trying to entertain, persuade, advise, analyze, describe, explain, inform, instruct, or argue a point? If it is one of those purposes, you should jot that down. Then to link this keyword with that message content, uh, sorry, or content, are they trying to, sorry, 
Yes, are they trying to communicate? Oh, so I read that wrong. Then to link this keyword with what message or content are they trying to communicate? Okay. <laughs> Give us the details about this, but be succinct. To work out what the purpose of the text is, it's useful to think about what the writer's attitude was at the time of writing. Looking at any contextual information, like where it's from, will also help. For this question, remember to use your own words. You may quote two or three words from the text if you prefer. And guys, the first thing that we need to recall right now is that when our paragraph our summary is supposed to be between 100 words and 150 words it should not exceed that but then before i went on with answering whatever question that was in this assignment i really asked myself what exactly it's work like bowling like i tried to find out more I try to find out from more sources like what is workplace bowling, you know, so that I can have a very clear idea of what I am really talking about. I wanted to be clear. So, um, because we're not uh, allowed to use sources like Google, Wikipedia, and all those kind of stuff, Cora, I tried to find a PDF from Google Scholar. So, um, you can find any other thing. You don't even have to reference it or whatever. I just tried to use the correct source that they want us to use. So, um, I'm just going to read, like, just this small passage here. What is workplace bullying? Workplace bullying is defined as repeated and unreasonable behavior direct, directed towards a worker or a group of workers that creates a risk to health and safety. So the first thing that you need to quote here or jot down is that, okay, um, whatever this bowling is, it is very risky to the health and safety of the victim. Repeated behavior refers to the persistent nature of the behavior and can involve a range of behaviors over time. Okay, that's not really important. Um, examples of behavior whether intentional or unintentional that may be considered to be workplace bullying if they are repeated unreasonable and create a risk of sorry risk to health and safety includes but yeah include but are not limited to abusive insulting or offensive language or comments unjustified criticism or complaints deliberately excluding someone from workplace activities Withholding information that is vital for effective work performance, setting unreasonable timeliness or constantly changing deadlines. You know, those things, they cause um, stress. They, they, like, they, they cost you happiness. You can never be at peace. You can never enjoy being at work where like this kind of behavior takes place. When you're not happy, when you don't enjoy your work, how can you enjoy, how can you work? Like, you know, you're just going to be stressed, you're going to be depressed. And what do those things do? They are a risk to your health. The tension headaches. Sometimes you, you have um, loss of concentrations, lack of sleep, insomnia. You're just going to be not fine, you know. And when you have that depression and all that, that things, those things also add more complications to your health, like your physical or well-being. You know what I mean? So um, these are the things that you, you need to maybe like look at before you try to answer, like just do a little research. Yeah, these are the things that I was talking about right now. Um, impact of workplace bullying. Workplace bullying can be harmful to the person experiencing it and those who witness it. The effects will vary depending on individual characteristics as well as the specific situation and may include one or more of the following. Distress, anxiety, panic attacks, or sleep disturbance. Physical illness, for example, muscular tension, headaches, and digestive problems. Reduced work performance, 
loss of self-esteem and feelings of isolation, deteriorating relationships with colleagues, family, and friends, depression, thoughts of suicide. You're like you can just get a lot of information from this document if you can be able to find this document let me show the name of the document okay the name of the document is anti work safe um, guide preventing and responding to workplace bullying so you're just going to find a lot of things from this um the document here like a whole lot of information that you need before writing this um that you just need to wrap it up like wrap it up like just get your head around this whole thing you know just try to understand what is going on and all that you know you see there's just everything that you need here but you can look at other um sources Okay, guys, I forgot to mention this to the new members. You guys, I am not a lecturer. I am only helping out. So I do not have the memorandum to this um, assignment. And another thing, this is the most important one. Do not say um do not write what i am saying here do not plagiarize or anything because um you just get penalized and i am not saying that these are the correct answers that you must just follow me or anything you can write whatever you feel that is right this is just to guide you wherever you get stuck okay um now we're going to answer um the first question um the first thing that you need to know is that um, this is a study. So this means that um, this article is based on research because you can see the in-text referencing here. By in-text referencing, I am talking about this stuff here, this kind of things here. This is in-text referencing, the likes of this. It shows that um, these ideas or these things that have been written here are taken from another author or they are somebody's ideas. So they have acknowledged the author right here. That's why they have referenced. So um, the purpose of this study is to describe and paint a clear picture of a bully including supplemental information from researchers. This study gives out a clear description of how bullying can occur in the workplace. Workplace bullying is claimed to be a well-known or a popular problem. Bullying can occur in different forms, that is sexual harassment, emotional and physical abuse. Bullying in the workplace involves aggression, whether it is directly or indirectly. The victim can suffer degrading and disrespect. Numerous, sorry, there are numerous reasons. Sorry about that. I really, I have a really bad handwriting. I can't even see it myself. There are numerous um, factors that lead to bullies or bullying. I don't know. Um, research has revealed that children who grow up in aggressive households are mostly expected to display the same act of aggression, which they carry into adulthood, and they become bullies from an from a from um sorry and until adult food which um caused them to become workplace bullying bullies and workplace bullying is considered to be an extreme form of social stress and bullying is claimed to be the most catastrophic issue for numerous victims or employees and we can also mention that different people use different coping mechanisms.
there's a lot of information that you can talk about here. You can talk about the shame, the fact that they feel worthless, the fact that they they blame themselves for whatever. Like you can just talk about anything. Like you can just um try to write about workplace bullying from the sources that you found. And I'm not saying copy. I'm just saying that you can write from I can write about the information that you found from that other thing because it's like really the more or less the same things just that um this article here just simply highlighted it never went into deep facts about workplace bowling second question with reference to the whole text suggest three possible ways in which workplace bowling may be resolved cite at least two external sources one substantiating your answer do not cite sources from the given text. There is no need to provide reference list for these two sources. <laughs> okay. Um, we're just going to read that again. Wow. Okay. Um, the second question reads, with reference to the whole text, suggest three possible ways in which workplace bullying may be resolved. Cite at least two external sources when substantiating your answer. Do not cite sources from the given text. There's no need to provide a reference list for those for these two sources. Whenever you see the words with reference to the whole text, the first thing that comes to mind is quoting and providing examples from the text. We do not want to see long quotes, but a quote here and there to support your response with help will help. You need to find three ways from the text in which workplace bullying may be resolved. So, find three solutions for workplace bullying. Remember to write them down in your own words or you will be marked down. You can incorporate two or three words from the original text into your answer. But please insert an in-text citation in brackets to show us this isn't your work. The next part of the question says that you should cite at least two external sources to support your response. You are not allowed to use the refer the references in the provided text. You need to find two of your own sources. Try searching workplace bowling on Google Scholar. There you will find millions of articles that come up. Try downloading two relevant articles. All you need is a statement, quote, or example that links with and supports each of your three points and you need to cite your source in the text. For example, I say one way to resolve workplace bullying is to, I can support this statement from another source by arguing that this is a code by Jonathan 2021, who argues that A, B, C. So here we're asked to find um, three ways in which uh, workplace bullying can be resolved. I am not going to find the one way that is in the text because I'll be taking your answers and I don't want to do that because it's a little plagiarism. People are going to write the same thing and all that. So, um, so now we need to do what I was talking about in the first place going to Google Scholar, found, uh, find articles, find sources, and try to read them up, find ways on how to resolve workplace bullying. So um, the ways that I found is to consult with your workers, you know, regular consultation with your workers, like try to find out how they're doing, how they're copying, are they enjoying themselves? Is everyone treating them right? You know, just try to interact with the workers, you know. The second one is seeking feedback from people who resign from your company. Find out why are you resigning? It's not like resigning is a bad thing or anything, but sometimes you just need you just need to know. Um 
why are they doing it are they resigning because they're being bullied or are they resigning because they found a better something you know something like that then um you can even monitor um the incidents from reports and compensation claims you know um you just need to like okay i know okay <laughs> I don't have to dwell much on this because I'll start explaining something that is not even important right now. Okay, yeah. So those are the things that I found. And this is not a very difficult question. You can find whatever reason in the internet. So I don't have to dwell much on it because, yeah, it's simple. Then we're going to jump to the third question. In your own opinion... Sorry, in your opinion, state three long-term effects of workplace bullying and discuss three ways in which one can deal with the effects you have mentioned. All right, now we're going to read from our podcast. The third question is, in your opinion, state three long-term effects of workplace bullying and discuss three ways in which one can deal with the effects you have mentioned. This question asks for your own opinion. This means that you do not huh? that you do not have to refer to the text, but you may quote one or two words just to show a relation to the text. Okay. Think about three long-term effects of workplace bullying. Write them down and then write down three ways in which one can deal with the effects you have mentioned. Make sure your effect and solution link it is a choice if you want to provide three effects first and then three ways to deal with them or you can first discuss the long-term effect and follow it up with a solution please do not copy from the internet students normally don't listen to us when we say this but when their results come back it's not pretty baby All right, um, in all paragraphs that we're going to write here, they must not be below 100, 100 words and not exceed 150 words. So um, now we need to go into the internet and search for three long-term effects of workplace bullying and discuss the ways in which um, one or the victim can deal how they can deal with them okay you can find whatever information but i found um low self-esteem low, uh, low self-esteem is caused by emotional abuse disrespect and degrading victims of bullying and the victims don't completely heal from the emotional scars caused even after a long period of time the painful memories don't really fade away from the victim's memory which makes the victim feel less valuable this affects their confidence and they suffer from low self-esteem for the longest time so um the solution here is um you can ask for your workplace bullying policy report the bully to authorities or the manager hr or whatever and you can jot down dates or notes on when the bullying took place so that you can have evidence to defend yourself when there's maybe a disciplinary hearing against your bully you know the second one is uh, workplace bullying has a negative impact on one's well-being physically and psychologically the solution to this problem is to attend therapy or counseling and confirmation that the victim has done nothing wrong in the manner 
sorry, in that manner, the victim will be relieved from feelings of guilt, humiliation, degradation, and shame. There's just a lot of stuff that you can write here, guys. I just uh, try to keep myself brief or succinct so that I do not take away all the answers from you guys. Workplace bullying um, causes stress, which can de then uh, develop into depression. Depression has many numerous effects, which result from All right, I was saying um, depression has numerous numerous effects which then um, result into mental or psychological distress and also psychosomatic complications such as migraine, hypertension, loss of concentration. One cannot be productive at work while the body does not get enough rest from insomnia. You know, we spoke about this. Uh, loss of concentration also add to more stress to the victim because they will fail to reach deadlines. Um, the solution to this can be exercising because exercising can help one to relax and stay healthy and calm. And exercising is a good way of releasing stress and anxiety. The fourth one, cardiac related illness. That's why I said that you guys, you're going to find a lot of things. I can even go to the 10th one, but then um, we don't have time. Um, cardiac related illness can emerge from workplace bullying, heart disease and stroke, a long lasting effect of bullying because levels of stress hormones are always elevated, escalated, sky high. And victims' coping mechanisms may also be dangerous because some victims tend to smoking, which is very addictive and dangerous to one's health. You know the dangers of smoking, guys. And uh, there are some long-lasting effects caused by workplace bullying. Oh, these are some long-lasting effects caused by workplace bullying. And the solution to this can be anti-bullying programs in the workplace if an employer can implement uh work anti-work sorry anti-bullying uh, programs i think a lot of this stuff can subside because there's just a lot of bullying everywhere even in schools everywhere there's just bullying you know guys fourth question quote and discuss the effects of three specific features of academic writing from the article refer to page 71 unit 6 of your prescribed book for this question <laughs> reading the same thing twice is so tiring the first uh, the fourth question is Quote and discuss the effects of three specific features of academic writing from the article. Refer to page 71, unit 6 of your prescribed book for this question. Here, you need to refer to unit 6 of your prescribed book, textbook. Some examples of academic features is transition words like, therefore, another feature could be Objective, subject, language, formal, colloquial, language, hedging, or cautious language. Maybe look for in for in-text referencing and there are a few others. So what uh what you need to do is Identify an example, quote it from the text. Remember, if you do not use quotation marks, you will lose marks. And then explain the effect of each feature and how it works in the text, not in general, how it works in the text. For example, if I say one example, if, if an academic feature is 
the word therefore, I can say that its effect in the text is that the word therefore shows us the causal relationship between workplace bullying and a person's mental health, for example. So that's just one example. You need to provide three examples like this. Just a disclaimer, the example I have mentioned is in the correct answer. All right, here we need to look at our text. What do you see, guys? Here we see in text referencing. I mentioned that text referencing, it's these things here. Yeah, there's just a lot of text referencing in here. So that should be number one. Number two can be formal language. Because this is an academic writing, obviously it is formal. Then we can also use objective language. Because um, most of the things here are based on research, so they are not objective or a personal writing or maybe the literal wrote, oh, sorry, maybe the, the, the author wrote according to their feelings or something like that, you know? I mentioned earlier that um, in-text referencing is used to acknowledge the ideas of somebody else. So you can just um, look at this and write that, but there are many, many things that you can get from this let's go to that page 71 that they spoke about this is our page 71 features of academic writing unit six first we have um formal vocabulary you're going to read there what is being said about formal vocabulary i do not have the time for that our time is running secondly you're going to look multi-word verbs you're going to read what it's being said there about it understand it and try to look it up on the text there's just many things that you can write here you don't have to specifically mention what i mentioned try to look for your own that is just for you to understand what is expected from you secondly we have use of the passive voice read it up understand everything, go back to your text, look at it, write down your answer. And next we have cautious language. And we also have objective versus subjective language. Read it up, understand it. You can also go to the chapter, the chapters that are written here, like um, emotive language, you can look it up on uh, chapter nine and the subjective language and the other one you can look it up on chapter 11 of the prescribed book that we spoke about academic english and lastly we have the use of questions just read these up the academic features here understand them then go back to your text and read it again and pick out the features that you found there then you try to explain how the work in that text you can also look at um formal writing or formal language or formal vocabulary um formal language um shows that um okay i mentioned that this is formal language because um most of these things are research based so um they're not personal information and they are not informal so um, this is the correct format of professional writing for academic purposes, you know. So like you can just pick out any sentence here which you feel that it's not biased or it's less personal, you know. When we get to the last one, which is objective language, um, it shows that, um, okay, you can find whatever sentence here and see that uh, maybe you can say that the arguments which are used here are impartial and they're not personal or judgmental or even emotive so um that 
like the information here is not even exaggerated or anything it's just fair and accurate so there's just a lot of things that you guys can find here just go through um unit 7 page 71 i mean unit 6 sorry page 71 of your prescribed book and understand what these how these features work and what they are then you come back to the text and look them up again the last question oh i'm tired of talking you guys i'm talking i've been talking for the last 40 minutes okay compare and contrast workplace bullying with any other form of bullying such as school or cyber bullying your answer should include three comparisons and three contrasting points between workplace bullying and any other choice of bullying refer to unit 12 of a prescribed textbook to answer this question let's go to our podcast all right let's read on our post podcast the fifth and final question is compare and contrast workplace bowling with any other form of bowling such as school or cyber bowling your answer should include three comparisons and three contrasting points between workplace bowling and any other choice of bowling refer to unit 12 of your prescribed book to answer this question compare means how you sorry compare means how are they the same and contrast means how are they different please read up on how to compare and contrast in your textbook and tutorial letter 501 the study guide before you answer this question it is very important that you do this because you will learn the type of words that you should be using for this question this is because if you just provide an answer without using the comparison and contrast language or words, you may not receive good marks for this question. Think of other types of bullying. We have cyber bullying, sexual bullying, emotional bullying, and physical bullying. There's so many other others. You need to choose one of these. So if I choose cyber bullying as my choice of bullying, I need to discuss three ways in which workplace bullying is similar to cyber bullying. Then I will discuss three ways in which workplace bullying is different from cyber bullying. And I also chose cyber bullying because I don't want to take away the answers from you guys. First of all, you need to know what cyberbullying is like. You need to just go through other sources, find out more information on the type of uh, bullying that you're going to choose. You cannot talk about something that you're not aware of or clear with. So um, the similarities are that uh, cyberbullying can also cause degrading, depression, and low self-esteem. Both forms of bullying can be experienced by any other age or gender. These are the similarities, guys. Don't get everything mixed up. Workplace bullying is as common or popular as cyberbullying. The rate of cyberbullying is escalating over the years, so it's and so is workplace bullying. Victims of cyberbullying and workplace bullying suffer the same traumatic effects and psychosomatic effects. So now I am looking at the differences, the contrast. Workplace bullying can sometimes be... Sorry, I was saying um, workplace bullying can sometimes occur face-to-face -face or in the working premises while cyberbullying is always through social media or technology-based interactions. Workplace bullying is practiced by the people that you work with or know, but cyberbullying can be done by any other person anonymously. The last point is face-to-face uh, -face bullying is usually or uh, workplace bullying is usually connected to the features of perpetrators and their relative physical or psychological power plays a big role. So you guys, you need to go back to unit 12 of your prescribed textbook that we spoke about earlier and look at how to write a construct a compare and contrast essay all right um 
you can start wherever you want to start with this but um, the comparing and contrasting start on page 112 of the prescribed book so you're just going to read everything there so ju there's just everything there in your prescribed book just look it up give yourself time enough time do not rush so that you can be able to pass this assignment okay you guys so that's all from me to you remember this is not the memo i am not a lecturer i am not 100 percent correct in all that i am just giving you guidance so that you can be able to understand what is expected from you that's all adios